The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Christine Westerlin here at the Illinois Association of Community Action Agency. So happy that you are joining us today on our DCEO ICA collaboration webinar. Um, we're really delighted today to have Katherine Clausen with us. She is with the Ohio Association of Community Action Agencies. And I think we're going to hear some really exciting and interesting um, ideas from her uh, focused on marketing and branding. Just a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. Um, if you do have a question during this webinar, I encourage you to use your dashboard. You should have a small question dashboard. I'll be looking for those questions as we move through the presentation. And I believe that Catherine will pause midway through and will provide an opportunity to ask questions. So I would encourage you to be thinking about questions to pose. We really want you all to dive much deeper into this idea of marketing and branding for community action. Um, let me take the opportunity to um, tell you a little bit more about Catherine. Um, she is the communications director at the Ohio Association, and she has 15 years of experience in the nonprofit sector that includes a decade in the Community Action Network. In her current role, she manages the association's communications and public relations efforts, as well as supports the communication efforts of 48 community action agencies in Ohio. That's a few more than we have here in Illinois. She has her Master's of Arts from Kent State, where she studied mass communication and journalism with a concentration in public relations. She also earned undergrad degrees in business management, marketing, and photography from Ohio University, and graduated summa cum laude from Franklin University, where she studied communications. Um, just another note for you as we move forward, uh, this webinar is being recorded. It will be made available. Um, I know that this is a real busy month for all of you in community action, so we want to make sure that uh, you have access to this webinar. Um, before we get started, we uh, turn everything over to Catherine. I would like us to um, say the promise of community action. So if you would say this um, along with me, um, if you don't want to verbalize it, it's okay just to read it silently. So the promise of community action. Community action changes people's lives, embodies the spirit of hope, improves communities, and makes America a better place to live. We care about the entire community, and we are dedicated to helping people help themselves and each other. So without further ado, Catherine, I'm gonna turn the controls over to you. Um, let me just make sure that I can do that. And Catherine, it's all yours. All right, can everybody see my screen there? Think so? All right. Um, so I'm going to apologize up front. I am just getting over the pneumonia. So um, if I pause or you hear a silence for a few minutes, that's me muting so I don't cough in your ears and on your presentation. But um, like Christine said, we'll stop about halfway through. We'll ask a couple questions and, um, and we'll have another session for questions at the end. So Thank you again, Christine, for inviting me to um, talk with you guys today. Um, I've been, like you said, in community action for over a decade now, and I just I, I enjoy working with this network. Um, I started, uh, just a little bit of a background here, I started at an agency, at a local agency, and then came over to the uh, state association side. So I, I know what it's like to get in the, the weeds and and have all of these different things that you're doing and wearing many hats and and trying to you know get everything done within the day so um, hopefully this presentation is going to give you guys some ideas that if you can want to start from scratch and you're going to go completely with the new branding piece or you just want to take a few pieces um, and say this is what we can do and we're going to move forward that way so um let me see my slide is not there we go. Okay, so here's the agenda. Like I said, we're going to briefly talk about the purpose and role of a brand, and then we're going to discuss the brand idea framework, which is the framework that the partnership adopted a few years ago um, and is encouraging community action agencies to, you know, take a look at and adopt um, if able. We're going to talk about just a few basic strategies, how to develop a message, and then how, tips for delivering a message. 
Now, if you guys saw the partnerships um, uh, webinar on elevator speech and, and um, branding, delivering a message, we're gonna kind of hit some of the same highlights there. Uh, we're gonna look at it a little bit differently. So first off, with this uh, being a webinar, normally I would ask you guys all what, what you think a brand is. So I want you to think in your head, like what, what do you think a brand is? Um, a lot of people initially think it's a logo. You know, it's, it's the Nike swoosh, it's the United Way hands, it's the Huggy Heart for community action. But I wanna make sure that everybody realizes that it's much more than just what a, lo a logo is. Try and think of yourself as, um, rebranding yourself. Uh, that was a trend a few years ago. I think it still keeps going on. I'm going to rebrand myself and, and what people think of me. When you do that, it's more than just changing your clothes. You know, we change our clothes every day. Uh, it's, it's more than putting on a different jacket. Think of, your, think of it as that. It's a, logo, a brand is more than your clothes. A brand is more than a logo. It's beyond what you see in the surface. It's all these different signals. So, for nonprofit, for community action, these are kind of the things that I think of when I think community actions, poverty alleviation, innovation, all the different programs that you guys are doing and putting together and, and for your local communities, you're focused, you're helpful, you're friendly, reactive, all of those great things. So a brand, like I said, is more than more than just a logo. It also tells the community it's it's what your your attitude is, what your passion is, how you respond to things. Um, it, when something good or bad happens in your community, how do you respond to it? What are you most knowledgeable about? What can people count on you to say, community action can do this for me? How trustworthy are you? So it also really articulates the mission um, you know, it, it builds, it's the way you communicate to the public, it's what you show, it's what you do, it's what you, what they see. Uh, it's, it helps you acquire resources, that's one of the great benefits of a really strong brand, you know, when people, um, you know, are looking for a job, do they, and they're a nonprofit, do they think of community action? Uh, when they're looking for partnerships, community action has always been really great at this. I want to partner with them. I think they'd be a great partner to help us expand our mission. Um, and also, it drives organi organizational cohesion. Uh, the different programs that we have, I've, I've seen agencies that have had 50, 60 different programs, 50 or 60 different grant um, opportunities that they have. And it's difficult to kind of keep all those um, as if they're looking at the same mission. You know, we have these silos. I know we talk about silos in community action and in nonprofits in general. So knowing that we're all working towards the same mission in the end really helps reduce those silos. And then it helps us uh, make simple, simpler decisions in the end. We know that we're here for poverty alleviation. Is this great opportunity to help alleviate poverty? Will it, will it do that? If not, maybe it's not the right thing for us. Um, if so, then let's look at it and see if we can, you know, make that work. So the brand idea is it's this book. I'm going to send it over to Christine. I'm also going to send her this PowerPoint so you guys can all come back and take a look at it. But this is a really easy read, and I encourage you, if you have a, a weekend and you're looking for something um, uh, interesting to read, that you, you pick up this book. It really breaks down everything that I'm saying here. You know, the old definition of a brand was a logo. Now it's this, it's everything. It's the strategic asset that embodies this mission and values. What is that? It's, it's everything. Um, one of the other big pieces that I want to point out is that it's everyone's job. Uh, it used to really be held in marketing and communications department. And I will be the last one to tell you that you don't need a marketing and communications department if you have the ability to have one. But really, our job is to help everyone else share that message, be cohesive, and, and give the same message. So it's, it's the executive team, it's the board, it's brand ambassadors, it's your customers, it's your staff, it's really everyone. We no longer have, with social media, one-way projection of our message. We can't just put it out there and, and hope that everybody receives it the same way. 
what we want to encourage is that they they participate they come back and they say hey what about this or have you talked about this or i have a question about this let's get everybody engaged so i know i'm kind of bouncing around here on this but um you know it really is is a it's a different kind of culture when you're thinking about a brand nowadays So the IDEO stands for Integrity, Democracy, and Infinity. Or I'm sorry, Affinity. Um, integrity really aligns the mission with the strategies. It's your strategic, uh, your strategic plan. Um, what what are you guys? What's your mission? What's your plan to get there? Uh, the democracy is really how you make that happen. It's training staff, training board, training stakeholders, creating ambassadors, and helping people feel comfortable when they're out in the community to say, hey, I, I want to talk about community action. Whether they're in a meeting or they're in a grocery store or um, talking to a friend, they have the information that they need, they have the confidence that they need to be able to talk about what it is that you guys do and how you do it. And then the affinity part of the brand idea really leverages that reputation. It helps you build partnerships. And ultimately, it drives your mission impact. And as you know, we can't all be great at everything. Community Action has a lot of fantastic programs, and it depends on what is needed at your local level. So while this agency may be doing fantastic things over in housing, this agency over here may be doing some um, Good rehabilitation or financially counseling or something else and if you put those two things together you can really help the um, demographic that we're, we're seeking to help you can really help your community so the affinity piece brings those partnerships together so you can have a greater impact so why is branding important for community action um, you know I I don't know how many agencies in Illinois use the, the Huggy Heart uh, piece. Um, as you can see our logo here on the side for the Okado, which is the training arm of OACA. Um, we don't have the, the Huggy Heart in here. We tried to kind of stick with the colors, but we definitely don't partner with the, the national brand. And that's okay. I will be one of the last people to say that you should, you have to stick with the Huggy Heart. You have to do this. Because one of the beautiful things about community action is that every agency is different, every agency is unique, because every community is unique. However, I do believe that it is vital that we use part of the national messaging in with our local messaging. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple of resources where you guys can grab some of that stuff. Um, this seal was just recently released. Uh, I believe it was released in January and their new, uh, the partnerships, new branding piece. So if you don't have um, the, the Huggy Heart in your logo or your visual brands or anything like that, you can still give a visual connection by saying you are a member of the Community Action Partnership. It doesn't matter if you're Community and Economic Development Association of Cook County or CETA as we all know them, or Community Action Partnership of Lake County, whether you have Community Action Partnership in the name or not, you can still connect with the national brand. So I'm gonna stop here, because uh, this is kind of all the technical pieces, and I wanna make sure that um, I got, get a chance to get your questions. Does anybody have any questions out there? And I'm just keeping an eye here, Catherine, to see if anyone has their hand up or if any questions have come in. I don't see any at this point. Um, I do have a question about the Huggy Heart. Sure. Yeah. So I know that um, I know that when I've talked, I've had conversation with Denise Harlow. Um, she always expresses um, that she believes every community action agency should have some sort of adaptation of that Huggy Heart. Do you have any um, ideas for us? I know you, you kind of hinted at some things that we could possibly do um, that would help us, I think, integrate that more into um, you know, our documents, our, our branding, our marketing campaigns, our annual reports that we release. Um, can, can you kind of share some, some thoughts around that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, there is definitely a strong um, 
you know, positive for everybody to see the huggy heart and everybody to see, um, you know, the colors and things. The I I think the the fact is, or the reality is, is that we have a thousand plus community action agencies that are all independent um, or public. You know, there I believe about 30% of the Illinois agencies are public, you know, so they have their own branding, um, visual branding pieces that they likely have to follow. Uh, but there are definitely ways that you can connect whether or not it's your main visual piece or not. So one of the things that we do here at the association, because we don't have the um, the Huggy Heart um, logo that we use. Um, I incorporate the seal that we showed. Let me see if I can go back to it. There we go. Proud member of the Community Action Network. That is on our homepage. That's one of the first things you see. Um, something else that we put when we, we do memes and things like that, we, you know, we'll make sure that to incorporate the Huggy Heart in there. Um, in our annual report, you know, we we put the promise of community action. Uh, I love that you start your webinars saying the promise of community action and i think that is one of the most adopted and accepted pieces you is one of the most universal it's not 100 percent universal but one of the most universal pieces of the the branding uh, that we have in the network that is used so you know making sure that we keep that as part of our message is another important piece there is on the partnerships website um, I helped uh, develop this earlier in the year. Um, there is a new branding um, guideline. So, you know, it, it gives some um, uh, fonts. I'm sorry, my, my, my brain's still a little foggy from, from this illness. Um, it gives fonts, it gives style ideas. You know, how can, we how can you incorporate, maybe not necessarily the Huggy Heart, but the colors. Um, here's the Pantone colors and the, the hex numbers and all of these different things. There's also um, low resolution files, high resolution files and vector files. So it's all there on the website. If you go to a communityactionpartnership.com, type in up in the top, type in branding, you're gonna see all kinds of different tools that you guys can use to take pieces or parts of it or all of it. Okay, that's that's really helpful. I think I had some awareness of that. I didn't realize there was so much there. So I think that's helpful. And we'll, we'll try to get the word out on that. Thank you for that, Catherine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm looking here and I don't see any hands up. I don't see any questions coming in through chat. Let me just take one more quick browse. Oh, I, wait, I, I think I do see a question here. Let me open it and see. Ah, my Your screen went away and my screen went away. Hang on. Okay, let me get back to where I need to be. I apologize. Um, it's, oh yeah, it's just, it's, it's Aaron, uh, Cobway, um, is just really saying thanks for the guidance on the branding guidelines that are on the cap page. So there you go. A nice shout out for you, Catherine. Yeah, absolutely. I know that it's, you know, it's a, it's a really great piece. Um, I was really proud to be able to get all of the, the vector images. So if you guys have, um, uh, the ability to, um, download those you can make you know some variations of it i anybody who was at the partnership conference in um, chicago just recently um hopefully a lot of you guys were there not too far away um so they had one of the banners up in the front they had a variation of the huggy heart with uh, lots of different photographs in there you know and it was um you know the faces kind of the faces of community action mixed in the huggy heart that's just one idea of things that you can do so there's a couple other ideas on there um to kind of stimulate um you know what you guys want to do at the local level so i'm glad that's out there yes great so moving moving on we'll go ahead and move on how can you get started and like i said I'll, this webinar this presentation is really kind of a little bit about a lot of different things. So I want to make sure that if you can't go through a comprehensive branding and messaging and marketing strategy, you know, which can be completely overwhelming for some agencies, especially, like I said, a lot of us are wearing multiple hats. We're doing various different things. Um, Hopefully you guys can take a couple of the things here and, and get started. So a lot of this has really been talked about organizational culture. You know, how can we talk about 
um, various different things and really what we're doing in a mission as opposed to programmatic. So my suggestion would be to, oh, I'm trying to forward, it doesn't want to forward on me again. Okay, there we go. My recommendation would be to start with your staff. You know, if you can't adopt the, the full branding mindset and culture right away, you know, we can still talk about, talk to our staff that we're more than just the programs that we offer. We're more than that, we're the, we're the people, we're the community, we're our volunteers, we're, we're all of these things with the mission to help people and change lives. Um, you know, thinking back about what is the purpose of Head Start? Is Head Start simply an early learning opportunity? Um, or is it a conduit to bring in multiple generations, a learning tool for parents, teach them how to advocate or help them advocate for their kids and all the things that they need? Is it a way for them to be able to go to work and you know get a few extra hours a day um, when their kids are are t taught by qualified teachers to help them get ready for kindergarten. It is, Head Start is an anti-poverty program. So we, we need to continue to look at Head Start and weatherization and all of these things as anti-poverty programs to help people. Um, and it's really difficult to do that. I mean, knowing I've I worked in housing and when you're doing all of these different, you know, the, the case management, the applications to, for rehabs or, or whatever, it's really easy to get into the mindset and forget about what the ultimate goal is. So talking to your staff, developing messages, bringing that culture of, yes, we are in all this, all this together, sharing different things, it can really help motivate and, um, and help in this process. So free the brand. After you develop the message, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute, uh, free the brand and share. It's everybody's job to go out there and talk to the community and talk to parents and talk to everyone and practice, practice, practice. That's the, uh, that's the big thing. You can't, you can't get enough practice. Once you start with the staff and they've kind of got the hang of it um, or they understand, you know, they've got that, they're on that new shift, let's then go to the board create confidence in the board members and the uh, private, the public, and the low-income representatives that you all have. Um, create confidence for them to go out there when they're in a meeting and say, hey, Community Action might be a good partner there. Or, hey, did you hear about community Act, what Community Action is doing over here? Encourage them to make connections. Um, sometimes that's making specific asks. If you have a board member that has a connection with a potential partner that you're interested, ask them to, to make that connection. Can you help us set up a meeting? Uh, this is what I'm looking for and this is kind of how, you know, here's some guidance on, on how, I, how we might be able to do that. Um, just as you did with your staff, give them guidance and training, give them the confidence and practice, practice, practice. So developing and delivering your message. Um, what is the purpose of this? It's common and consistent language. If we're all saying the same things, we all know what we're saying, what our, what our ultimate message is, what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, it helps reduce the multiple agency image. I think a lot of us have that um, you know, we have those head starts. We have the, and I don't mean to pick on head starts for all of you guys out there. Um, the weatherization, we have all of these different things that we're doing that are that are very big and powerful and effective. Um, but when we're only out there talking about one of these programs, people start to think, well, Head Start's different than community action. That's got to be something different, you know. So talking in a consistent language across the boards, across staff and, and board members kind of helps to reduce that. And also, um, you know, when you have this message, um, like I said, I'm kind of going off of like a, an initial elevator speech type piece. You know, it can an quickly answer the question, what do you do? Uh, it can consistently answer that question across the board gives people reason to care, and then, you know, it helps people engage further. So in that um, national style guide that I talked about, within that guide, there is some national boil, boilerplate language. 
I think you guys can all use. This is just a piece of it, and it's one of the things that I really um, go back for. I'm going to pause for just one second, please. I am so sorry. Um, so, the, you know, we are part of a thousand plus community action agencies across the country. We're a robust state and local force. We reach children and families in 99% of America's counties with life changing services that create pathways to prosperity. It's just, it's when I hear that, when I think about it, it's not just, yes, you're doing some fantastic things at the local level, and that's what makes, like I said, a special, but our neighbors are also doing it, and our neighbors are also doing it, and you get it all the way across the country, and we're just a powerful, robust force. So, um, just a couple pieces, like I said, the, the partnership recently redid their mission, vision, values, or there's a little bit of things on there, the community action promise, if you're not already using it, of course, Christine, it looks, we've all got a copy of it there, and then some other pieces about the network, how you address, um, how your agency addresses the needs and so forth, so that's a really great piece in there, too. Then go back, um, kind of gather some facts, like what does your agency do? Why do you guys do it? Um, what are you a part of? You're part of a nationwide network. Um, why are you special? And why should this, I'm sorry, this says why should, why do you care? Why do you care, but why should everybody else care too? Just kind of some things. It's nice, um, this little exercise here is a nice piece that, can help you guys think a little bit more and really dive down into what you guys are doing every day. So basic principles, and this works not just for a core pitch. Um, this also works for marketing pieces in general. So just as much as the cover of a brochure in your lobby should grab the attention of the intended audience, your pivot in a conversation during a networking event should also do the same. So you have your opening. Um, it could be, I read an article the other day and, and about that said community-based fatherhood programs are really successful at maintaining strong family units. Did you know that Community Action also does uh, fatherhood programs? And we've seen a lot of really great success. Um, like I said, oh, it could be oh, the cover of the brochure. Hey, are you expecting a baby? Oh, if you are expecting a baby, you may walk over there and say, oh, check out this maternity program. So it's the opening. What do you do? It grabs their attention. Then the need. Why do you do what you do? We have 1.6 million people in, in poverty in Ohio. There are 1.6 million people in poverty that are below the federal poverty levels. There's a need. That's why Community Action does what we do. It could be whichever statistic or program or, or piece that you're specifically talking about. But we want to illustrate the why. Why are we doing this? And then we're going to tell them that we are the solution. Community Action. What are we doing to fill that need? Well, we have a fatherhood program. We have 48 community action agencies across Ohio. We have every county or 99.99% of all American counties are served across the country with community action. And then we're going to make sure that we follow up. We want to say, hey, so here's some information. Um, let me leave you my business card. Or can I follow up with a... A meeting. Uh, can I give you a call and, and schedule a meeting for you? Or it could be as if you'd like to learn more, you know, our website is really is out there. It's oacaa.org or whatever your website is and, and give them a call to action. Never leave on without something. In a brochure, it's simple. Call this phone number. Uh, visit this website. Fill out this application. Schedule an appointment. Things like that. So when you're talking to your audience, you want to consider their values. What relates their values to your mission? Why should they care? Think about, uh, you know, all of your audiences are going to be a little bit different, um, especially when you're in a face-to-face -face piece. 
it's a little bit easier to assess. Um, if you're talking, like I said earlier, you're talking about something and you pivot the conversation uh, to a fatherhood program. You know, are they passionate about fatherhood programs? Are they passionate about um, energy conservation? You know, how can you pivot the conversation to you? What, are, what do they value? And the whole picture. Like I said, throughout this the presentation, we've talked about it's we're more than just one program. We're pro we provide a service. What does my job specifically do to help impact the mission? My job is fantastic because I get to tell your story every single day. I mean, I can't imagine a, a greater thing for me to be able to do. Um, you know, with with for Head Start, their job, a teacher's job is to be able to teach a child to have, so they are confident when they go into kindergarten and they are ready to learn and they just, you know, they rise to the head of the class. Um, so think about what your piece is doing to help the whole picture. And avoid me go. If you guys saw the other presentation, don't don't uh, share this one. But this goes for really everything, including all of your marketing materials, your annual reports, your brochures, your conversations, all of this stuff. Don't call your fatherhood program cap fee or whatever community action fatherhood program. If you must shrink it, shrink it, shrink it down to something that's recognizable. You can call it fatherhood program. Um, call CSBG your your state grant, uh, call HWAP your weatherization program or your energy conservation program. MIGO is the absolute worst. And I'm just wondering if anybody here knows what MIGO is yet. MIGO is my eyes glaze over. <laughs> Sorry about that again, my last cough. So um, the last thing you wanna do is, is get your um, audience confused and they have no idea what you're talking about. Now, there are very good ways and appropriate ways to talk and use your acronyms. If you're at a partnership conference and you're talking about HWAP and LIHEAP and CSBG, we all know what you're talking about. So just uh, make sure that you know your, your, know your audience. And talk real. You speak like you're talking to another person. Practice until you feel comfortable. This is a very difficult thing to do sometimes. Um, and it's different because if you get comfortable in front of this audience, then you might not be comfortable that in front of a completely different audience. So practice, practice, practice. Um, stand in front of the mirror. Uh, record yourself on your phone and listen to yourself in the car. I mean, do all those little weird things. It's, it's, it'll make you feel, help you feel comfortable and um, and get out there and, and talk to other people about it. Start with your family, your friends, when you're talking at dinner, but talk real. And again, practice, practice, practice. So that is the end of the presentation I have. I hope I didn't speed through it too quickly, but it looks like I did go a little fast and I apologize, but hopefully I got everything out. I want to open it up to questions. Um, if you guys have anything um, out there, questions, comments? It looks like there is one question that's come in. Let me see what it is. Um, yeah, Aaron uh, again asks this, uh, do you have any resources, tools, or advice on preparing a marketing audit prior to jumping into developing and implementing a plan? Yeah, so what I would start out with, if you're gonna do an audit, and I'm gonna hold on one second, take a drink of water, please. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I would just really start from scratch, you know, grab every little every piece of materials that you have. Um, your brochures, your letterhead, your um your website, all of these different pieces, kind of lay them out, you can categorize them and really say, okay, what are we doing? Are we following some of these basic rules? Are we using Migo? Are we talking to our audience real? You know, another piece too, maybe you wanna consider is, I, th I believe the, the average reading, we wanna market to the average eighth grade reading level. You know, we don't want to go too far into 
um, a lot of technical terms are writing, unless we're writing a technical paper. You know, if you're writing a, a grant piece or a, a project paper, then, then that's a little bit different. So just kind of take a look at everything, start at the ground, and then start at your staff. I've got some other pieces that I could send you separately. Um, if uh, Christine, if I can get, if we can make the connection there yeah, through Christine. Absolutely. I've got some other materials or I can send them to Christine and we can send them out to the, the group entirely. If you're, if you're gonna go for a whole full broad piece. That would be great. And I, and I will say, I think that is something that many of our agencies are exploring. Um, so it sounds like Aaron also, you have some expertise as well. So we, we, we might lean into some of your knowledge um, moving forward. Are there any other questions? for Catherine. Catherine, I, I have to say that I was trying to decipher the MIGO um, acronym. <laughs> it did not come up with my eyes glazed over. My variations are a little funny. Um, but what I think what you really brought up was a really good point. You know, I think community action tries to be kind of everything to everybody and we have to be very mindful of how we identify those programs both internally and externally because i think it is confusing as you mentioned yes absolutely and you know like i said when you're talking to an audience that already understands the language and it's it's very easy to to go right i mean i could have an entire conversation and my husband or my kids or, or everybody would be like, is she speaking another language? You know, <laughs> that's just one of the great things about community action. But we also have to know when to dial it back and when to say, oh, okay, you don't know what, what, we're, what we're referring to when we say CSBG. So we're gonna, you know, use the language that, that you do understand, not to be condescending or anything. It's just, you know, every industry, every piece has their, their own specific language as do we. We just need to make sure how we project the message. Right, that's exactly right. And I think, again, yeah, I think the more that we are, we acknowledge that we need to do that, the better um, we'll become at practicing kind of that demystifying of the work that we do. Absolutely. And like I said, if for those that use the, the visual piece too, I wanna make sure that I hit on that. I think it's fantastic that you're using the the Huggy Heart piece as if it's being incorporated into, um, into your, your main visual logo, your marketing materials, or any of those pieces. I just want to emphasize that it's not the only thing out there. And if you're going to focus on one piece, um, Aaron, like you asked, what, you know, where, where would you start? Where, uh, where's the jumping off point? I would start with your messaging. How are we as a staff, as an agency, as an or a state as a network, how are we talking about community action and what it is that we're doing? Yes. And once you can get there, then you can take the next hurdle and say, you know, we're gonna make sure that we incorporate this across the board. Great wisdom, thank you, Catherine. I don't see any other questions coming in, Catherine, so let me uh, take this opportunity to thank you um, for your participation and sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. Um, you, I think I learned so much and I know that our network did too. Um, I look forward to that, the book, The Brand Idea. Um, and that is, I think, an exciting opportunity for us to kind of dive into that a little bit better. Um, let me get my screen up here. Uh, so thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, so I just want to remind everybody that our next webinar um, in this series is October 2nd. Um, we're going to be exploring bundled services. Um, Edmund Lai of the Champaign County Regional Planning Commission will be on the call. And also just to remind you all that next Wednesday, um, Carly Wiltsey, um, our community development uh, training specialist here at ICA, will be providing a webinar on data basics. So I hope that you all are involved in those upcoming webinars. We'll get the registration information out um, about the October 2nd one um, within the next few days. So again, Catherine, thank you so much. We appreciate your, your willingness to be with us today um, and that you were working through um, your, your recovery from your illness. Uh, so again, we thank you for that. Um, well, thank you for having me. All right. And so I will end this webinar for all. Um, so again, thank you for your participation today. And we look forward to having you online with us the next time. Take care and bye-bye. All right, Catherine, thank you. 
Great. Thank you, Christine. I, uh, again, appreciate the invitation and uh, hopefully I was helpful. I will, I'll gather some information. And I'll send it over to your way here in the, the next couple of days. Perfect. I appreciate that and take good care of yourself. Well, thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.